Uh, we have um, first on the agenda is to call the roll. Uh, Secretary Green, if you would take care of that for us. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Trustee Grisham. Present. <laughs> Trustee Ramsey. Here. And uh -huh. Chairman Stegall Jones. Here. Madam Chair, you have a quorum. However, in accordance with Tennessee Code 8-44108 Section C3, I have a few questions I have to ask for the record. Trustee Grisham, first, are you able to clearly hear us so you can participate in this meeting? I am. Thank you. Members of the board present in the room, are you able to hear Trustee Grisham? We are. Trustee Grisham, for the record, can you please identify any persons present in the room with you from which you are participating in this meeting? I am alone. I live alone. <clears throat> so y'all know. Thank I live you. Alone. Thank you. Uh, please let the record note that the following trustees are also participating in this committee meeting. Trustee Ayers is participating remotely. Trustees DiCarlo, Foley, and Latimer are participating uh, in the room with us. Finally, please note that because we have trustees participating remotely, all votes must be taken by vote roll call. Thank you. Uh, next on our agenda is to approve the committee minutes from November 13th, 2020. Those were included in your packet. Do we have any changes or amendments to those? Seeing none, I uh, would entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Do I have a second? A second. All in favor? Uh, you, at, um, Mr. Green, will take that roll. Yeah. Yes. Trustee Grisham? Yay. Trustee Ramsey? Aye. And Chairman Stegall Jones? Aye. I apologize, since we have one remote, we need to do roll call for the, for the votes. So if I thank you, Mr. Green, for reminding me of that. Um, next on um, the agenda is, is an action item for us, which is a revision to the audit plan since the last time we met. And Ms. Lewis is here. Yes. I think I'm here. <laughs> oh, there she is. <laughs> I'll get used to the room, maybe. <laughs> if you'll go ahead. Okay. Uh, we, I'm asking for approval of two additional uh, items to be added to the audit plan. Miss uh, Lewis, I can't, it's, this is tough to hear. Can you hear me? You can't hear? I oh. can now. Okay. okay. I'll lean over. Okay. First of all, good morning. I guess I should say that in this beautiful place. It's nice to be back together again. Um, as far as the revisions to the audit plan, I'm asking for approval for two additional items. The first is a review of the College of Nursing. With the recent retirement of the dean, my office was asked to perform an audit of this office. This is a common request, uh, similar to reviews that we've done for head coaches, as well as uh, vice presidents and the president. The next one that I'm asking for is uh, the follow-up for the sunset audit. This is required by state audit, and it's due in May. So those are the two additions that I'm requesting approval for. Okay, anyone have questions? I, we, I think we've all discussed that in the past and are aware of those two revisions. Um, all in favor of the, or I, I need to, I'm gonna keep doing that, am I not? So I need a motion to accept um, the uh, revisions to the audit plan. Move accept. Do I have a second? I'll second. All, or nope, I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> Mr. Green, will you take the vote? Yes, Trustee Grisham. Aye. Trustee Ramsey. Aye. And Chairman Segal Jones. Aye. Yes. Now I will say again, I'm still having trouble hearing. Um, and the next section, couple of sections may be the longest. Do you, or do you think hey, this Ms. Lewis, have perhaps if you sit at instead? that mic right there, that may help. Okay. I'm not sure. Can you hear me now better? That sounds a little, it's, it's, a, it's actually some kind of an echo, I think, more than we can't hear you. Okay. Is that better? That's better. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 
Um, the next on the agenda, do you want me, do you yes, want me to go ahead? Yes, if okay. you will discuss the audit work performed since, no, since the last time we met in November. Okay. Um, my office completed one audit and two investigations between October and January. You will find information related to each of these in your audit material. The first uh, audit that we performed was the WETS FM radio. This is a financial um, statement audit, and we do this every year as it's required by the Corporation for Public Broadcast. It's the only financial statement audit that we perform. Uh, we do acknowledge and disclose that we're not independent to perform a financial statement audit, but based on the CPB, they have allowed internal audit to render an opinion for their purposes. Uh, it is our opinion that the financial statements for the year ending June 30th, 2020 were fairly presented in all material respects and there were no findings. Is there any questions on the WETS audit? I don't think so. Thank you. Okay, the next were um, two. That sounded better. Much better. The echo went away. Okay, so is that good? Okay. Oh. <laughs> I think we figured it out. It's, it's not just you, and I'm not hard of hearing. All the hand signals I was trying to give to Dr. Green to turn it up for. <laughs> Excellent. Do I need to repeat anything up to this point? No, okay. I don't think so. Okay. Go on. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, next, we completed two investigations since our last meeting. The first was the Human Patient Simulation Laboratory, or the Sim Lab. An investigation review of the Sim Lab was conducted, and during this review, it was discovered that some of the licensing agreements between the Sim Lab and external parties did not contain all the required approvals and disclosures. In addition, two employees who owned outside businesses did not seek approval before entering into a business relationship with ETSU. These companies offered training courses to both individuals and outside entities in conjunction with university laboratories. And the business relationship and related transactions lacked transparency and full disclosure. And based on discussion with the administration, um, appropriate controls are being implemented to help ensure compliance with university policies including proper disclosures and approvals. Conflict of interest should be disclosed annually and reviewed in accordance with university policy. Uh, is there any questions on the Sim Lab investigation? I don't think so, thank you. Okay. Um, the final investigation we did was on procurement and contract services. Um, in April of 2020, internal audit was notified of a direct deposit. Uh, the direct deposit information of one of the university's major vendors appeared to be fraudulently changed. The investigation um, did reveal that it was fraudulently changed uh, and the funds that were allowed to be diverted to a fraudulent bank account totaled approximately $1.4 million. A claim has been filed against the vendors insurance policies, including but not limited to their cybersecurity policy. And the university also anticipates a receipt uh, from the state of Tennessee through uh, our cybersecurity insurance policy. The timing of any recoveries is uncertain at this time. Uh, in addition, there was no evidence discovered to indicate that an employee, a university employee was knowledgeable, was a knowledgeable participant in this fraudulent scheme. Uh, since this, uh, this uh, audit, we've also um, reviewed, we also did a follow-up review of the changes made to procedures and internal controls in accounts payable. Based on our review, actions have been taken to help prevent similar schemes from occurring. And then also um, in your material is the heat map of those three audits. Do you have any questions on the procurement audit or any of the other two? We do. You know, we, we mentioned this last time, the fact that we have $200,000 insurance for, that we're taking with it, but to go after them too. Are they actually fighting paying the $1.2 million difference or, or, or they were just in negotiations? Where does that stand right now? Um, I would divert to our legal counsel. Um, 
I just wonder, though, they say we really don't know that, or we're saying, well, let, let's look into that. Where, where, where do we stand? Um, so we Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. uh, we submitted the letter to, um, to uh, Sodexo, and they provided it onto their insurance carrier. We did receive a letter from their, their insurance carrier requesting additional information, and we have been compiling that. Uh, information and I'll be preparing or, or we can, we'll be preparing a response to that letter and then once they have that information I think they will review the policy. Uh, the letter we received is because um, our contract with Sodexo requires us to be to them to list us as an additional insured on their policy. So that's what we received back was a letter of, of them looking at the claim with us as an insured. And so we're going to, so that's, you know, we haven't entered this stage of negotiations or anything yet, but once I get that letter back with the information they've requested, I think at that point, you know, we'll move forward on that, on that front. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Lewis, for your work and, um, and your follow-up for that also. Um, I think that completes that section. Next, we have uh, Ms. Lewis will uh, present the recommendation log status as of January 31st, 2021. Okay, you'll notice in your audit material um, the recommendation log uh, that shows green if they're in progress and blue if they've been completed um, since um, the last audit committee meeting. Uh, we've worked really hard to try to get some of those cleared off. Uh, and so the ones in blues, appropriate action has been taken uh, in order to correct the deficiencies in those areas. Um, is there any questions regarding the heat map? I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, recommendation log? I don't see any. I don't think so. Thank you. Um, next, we have um, a couple of new folks in here, um, and we are going to talk about the public safety update and the annual report. Uh, we'll take most of our time uh, during this meeting, but Mr. Ross, Dr. Ross is here, I believe, and he might want to introduce uh, a little bit more, but we have our new chief and, our, and Officer Blanton here to also to go over some of this. Can you hear that? Okay. Yes. I want to give you one minute of where you were sitting, Melissa Stadal Jones, if I could. That pit right there <laughs> is the very first part of this building that was ever constructed. If that pit was one foot deeper, this building would cost a million dollars more. If that pit was one foot higher, this building would cost a million dollars more. That set every single thing for this stage in this building. And the last thing I'll tell you is this is a proscenium stage. Within the stage has side walls in the front. It's a modern interpretation. The, the oldest surviving one is actually in Parma, Italy. But what that means is this is an invisible wall. The proscenium is an invisible layer. And the actors, which is what all of you are today on this stage, <laughs> you're not supposed to know that an audience is watching you. And so as you sit here in this 80-foot fly tower today and you look at these cranes and these pulleys and you stand behind this invisible layer, this proscenium stage and that orchestra pit, if your mind does do doze, at least maybe you can dream of all of the, the creativity that's going to happen in the future. So I at least wanted to know where you're sitting. Uh, welcome. Uh, it's been a quiet place in some ways. Uh, hopefully the future uh, will, will be better. But with that said, welcome to ETSU. I want to talk briefly just about a, a emergency preparedness, public safety in general. Definitely want to talk about some accreditations, reporting, uh, some of those pieces uh, that have been addressed. Um, but if you look at this team right here, these first few roles, you have a chief of police who comes from LMU. LMU was uh, noted out of 500 colleges as a, the safest campus. A lot of accolades. Uh, chief Cesar Gracia has come to us. Uh, Jeff Blanton, which you'll see in a moment, has uh, a glorious career really with the FBI, dealing with issues such as civil, civil rights, served on a joint terrorism task force, has a lot of experience, many years of experience. Two other individuals I'd like to talk about is uh, Dan O'Brien. He has a long history uh, in environmental health sciences. He has a history with facilities. He has a history with Clary. Uh, he has a history in a lot of things, uh, radiation certifications, 
And then uh, Captain Mark Tipton, who is now Deputy Chief of Police, is serving in a new role, has been here for decades. And I'm sure Chief Grasho will talk about our accreditation recently. In, in essence, whether it's uh, safety, snow, emergency preparedness, cameras, equipment, that's the team. So um, I never say we're perfectly safe, but right now, that's a lot of brain power, a lot of experience, and you're probably as safe as you can be with them sitting here this morning. So I would like to just say I believe in this team. We have new equipment, new people, new resources, uh, any tissue that we've never had. Um, I want to thank Dr. Nolan for helping me uh, recruit and find some of these people. Uh, and I want to turn it over to Chief Gracia, and they're going to show you a little bit this morning about that equipment, the procedures, reporting, and things that I hope uh, you find acceptable. Chief Gracia. Welcome, Chief Gracia. We're glad you're with us. Thank you so much. Sorry. I hope that I was kind of sitting back there trying to make certain that you guys could hear me. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, for this great opportunity. One of the things that I would like to say, I have almost 30 years of law enforcement. I began in the city of Kingsport, so I'm, I'm familiar uh, with, obviously, with this area. I'm a graduate of East Tennessee State. I acquired my bachelor's and my master's degree both uh, from here, so this is a great homecoming. I met my wife here at ETSU, and both my daughters were born down the street at the Johnson City Medical Center, so uh, the majority of, of, well, basically my whole law enforcement career was spent in Northeast Tennessee, so it's an honor to be here, and I appreciate the opportunity to share with you guys just a little bit of what we've been able to accomplish here. The first thing I would like to speak about is our accreditation. We are accredited by the state law enforcement, uh, oops, sorry. We good? Yeah. There we go. Uh, we are accredited by the Tennessee Law Enforcement Accrediting Agency. Uh, a little background on law enforcement. There's approximately just over 300 law enforcement agencies throughout the state of Tennessee. Of those 300 agencies, 76 are accredited by the state. Of those 76, there are only 10 colleges and universities that are accredited. We happen to be one of them. So that, it's an amazing honor to be a part of that department. And as much as I'd like to take credit that I was the one responsible for it, I'm glad that Deputy Chief Mark Tipton is here. He spearheaded this prior to my arrival. So we are on one of only 10 colleges and universities. And when you look at the whole spectrum, over 300 law enforcement agencies were, were honored to have that, uh, that title to go along uh, with our department's name. And we look forward to continuing that as we move forward for going through the reaccreditation program. The last thing, and I'll make this brief, that we want to talk about, and it's in regards to the audit that we had, one of the things uh, that was identified and recommended was that we needed to do a better job of accurately reporting the crimes that occurred on campus and on what's considered the Cleary geography, which is approximately one mile outside of any university-owned property. What we have done as part of the recommendation was we needed to make certain that whoever was directly involved with the reporting process would receive Cleary training. Well, we took it a step above that. I, I spoke with Jeremy, and I'm a firm believer you. If one is good, two is better. So we have now trained all of our, the employees in, within the Department of Public Safety in Cleary, and we're in the process of certifying a new Cleary compliance officer, which will be working with myself. So we'll have two Cleary compliance officers to make certain that when we are reporting our crimes and we're keeping up with our, our daily crime logs, everything's gonna be accurate so that when we, they revisit us with the audit, hopefully we'll be able to show that we have made certain and met those recommendations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning, thank you for having me here today. We, we appreciate the invitation. And I'd like to introduce myself a little bit further. As, as Jeremy said, my name is Jeff Blanton. Uh, I've got a little over 31 years law enforcement experience, uh, both on the state level and the, uh, and the federal level. And I'm, uh, I feel very blessed to be here at ETSU. Uh, the experience so far has been great. Uh, I've, I've worked very closely with ETSU in my position at the FBI. And uh, the ETSU family, it, it truly is that. It's a family, and I, I appreciate the opportunity to be here and I'm excited about the things to come while being here in the, the capacity that I'm in at ETSU. The, uh, some of the things on the agenda that we have are in the, in the emergency management realm. 
is maybe is improving our training, uh, pushing out some uh, some more training agenda. Jeremy and I have discussed it. Uh, the vision that Dr. Nolan has going forward for the university is is to make sure that we keep the, the people and the students and the whole campus community as safe as possible. Uh, the chief and I have a pretty aggressive training agenda going forward. And in doing that, it's not just, as he's talked about the Cleary side, but it's rolling out what do things mean when we, we notify students and faculty that we have uh, an emergency situation. So we want to push out through our mass notification system, which we've done, a, the, the university has done a great job of implementing. What, what does that mean? Well, we have, uh, we have some clear and concise language that we want to make sure everyone understands. So we have new training rolling out for that. Uh, specific actions to take when those things come out. We have a great marketing effort coming forward with our new ETSU Safe app. We also have a collaboration with some of the other colleges. Uh, for example, the, the uh, IT department and hardening the infrastructure of the university. In the, in the prior presentation, you heard about some, uh, some losses that occurred in, in another, another part of the university maybe hardening some of the cyber security areas and things like that to keep the whole university safe. So we're looking at a, at a global approach of keeping the entire campus, the entire university safe going forward. And I'm, I'm going to cede some of my time to Dan O'Brien. We'd like to show you how the university has spent some of the money that we have to, to help keep the entire university safe on some of the more high-tech forensic tools that we have used uh, to help people in this university setting. Good morning, um, like Jeff said, I'm Dan O'Brien. Um, one thing I would like to mention, Jeff had talked about mass notifications and um, we have an app which is the main method of uh, communicating with our campus in the event of, of emergencies. Um, I encourage everybody here um, to check out the app. It's free to everyone. You don't have to be a faculty, staff, or, or a student. Um, to have access to the app. That wasn't the case before with an older uh, notification system that we had. Um, this app is, is uh, we're going to do a lot of marketing here in the near future, um, but I highly encourage it's the, re the reason why I point out that it's not just for ETSU students, faculty, and staff. It's open to the parents of, of students uh, at the university, and it really just uh, lets everybody know what's going on gives them uh, specific instructions in the event of um, incidents on campus. And it's got all kinds of great features as well. It's got emergency call functions where uh, a student can push the emergency call button and it'll immediately uh, call public safety dispatch. It will also, uh, through GIS, locate that individual. Um, it's got other, other resources of reporting tips or um, you know, just information about uh, all our safety resources. There's campus maps on there. It's got a friend walk feature uh, that you can actually uh, hit the friend walk. And if you don't report within a certain amount of time, somebody will be calling you from public safety to check on you and make sure that you did reach your location safely. So it's, it's just a great tool for us. And as Jeff said, we're gonna really work on some marketing efforts moving forward. What I'd like to talk about just briefly is uh, security cameras and access control. So uh, the university, uh, with the thought of our mission statement, people come first, we've invested well over $2 million, um, $2 million in uh, security cameras and access control throughout our campuses. Um, what this entails is um, high definition cameras uh, that continuously scan, analyze, learn their environment, um, Basically, the, the, the cameras provide unprecedented uh, visual detail combined with situational awareness to help us form, inform our emergency responders. Uh, from a forensic perspective, investigations that used to take hours or days uh, now could take up to a few minutes with, with the search capabilities of our new camera system. Um, this combined with access control has allowed us to keep our, our campus a much safer, more secure environment. Um, speaking of access control, so all our residential facilities, and you're probably aware of this, but we have access control in all our residential facilities. So if you don't belong there, you don't get in. We continue to add additional access control to our academic um, and administrative buildings as well. 
this gives us a, a number of capabilities as well as helps us, um, helps public safety from an investigation standpoint. Um, and it also helps us with uh, securing some of our facilities uh, if we have an event. What I'd like to show you real quick here is um, an example. It'll be the last thing I do uh, here and uh, show you a quick example of how we use this system. So what I've got up on your screen here is a, um, this is a, a look at four of our cameras. And let's say uh, we have a call in to public safety dispatch of a person of concern. Maybe we've had a, a theft and we've had somebody call in and give a general description and also a location. So we're able to go to that location. And so this is our quad area here. So we were told that this individual was, was seen in the quad. And sure enough, we see an individual with the description that was given. And we're able to actually track this individual. And, and at the same time, we've got dispatch sending officers to, to investigate further and, and see, see what exactly is going on here. So, so anyway, this is one of the ways that we were able to utilize our cameras. This, is, this can be real time, or this can be after the fact. Um, so we see here, he, uh, this individual is actually going into our Ball Hall. So we, what we do is we open another camera at the entrance of Ball Hall. And so we're even able to pause the camera at any point. We've got capabilities where we can zoom, give us a better description of this, uh, this individual. This might help dispatchers to let officers know, you know, a better description of the person. So we can continue to monitor this person and where they're, where they're moving by following the cameras. Um, and so now this, this individual is actually leaving. So we will see them walk out here. I'm sorry, sometimes it bounces around. And so we can track this, this, this person to make sure we know their location, or we can give information to officers if we have a situation going on, um, and we need to give them some sort of situational awareness of, of what might be occurring. Also gives them kind of a, a view of the environment, if you will, lets them know what's around the corner, that kind of thing. And then, as you see here, this individual, this person of interest, We send them actually go over to Gilbreth Hall. And sure enough, the access control tool that we have at Public Safety, I'm going to go ahead and pause this, next shows that we have this individual come up on our access control point. And sure, and I've had to, uh, we've had to black out some of the information on here, but this is, this is actually me. Uh, that was me walking through the quad, <laughs> and Public Safety was tracking me. So this shows that I entered Gilbreth Hall um, through that access control point. So these are some of the tools that public safety is using day in and day out uh, to keep our campus safer, more secure. Um, and I just wanted to give you an example of, of, of you know, what our investments, uh, I mean, obviously the rewards are huge here. We've, uh, our investigations, um, uh, our uh, chief can attest to this. We have a, a huge success rate once we get them on video and tie all these tools together. Um, and so it, it's just been an excellent investment for the university. And we continue to invest more in cameras and access control um, throughout our campuses. And I, and I want to add one thing to that, that it, it, we don't tell people how many cameras we have or where they are, but I will tell you it's very, very rare if you ask Mark Tipton, Cesar Gracia, or Dan O'Brien, or Jeff Blanton, it was was uh, Ron Ramsey on campus today? Did he go in this building? Did he come over? Did he cross state or Franklin? And they couldn't find out exactly the times. <laughs> they don't monitor that day to day, but they also work with JCPD. I will just tell you, it's, it's been a rare occurrence where they can't uh, identify those things. It's not, it's not perfect, but it's, it's really good. So that's a word of caution there too. Yeah. That, that is correct. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. That's amazing. How clear was that? Um, uh, really? That's great. Yeah.
thanks so much for all your work in keeping the students and the faculty safe. It's yes. so important. Uh, you can't learn unless you feel safe. And, and, and truly welcome to all of you uh, to this camp, or, yeah, to the two new ones, I think. Did they get that? There's two. Um, yeah, two new ones, these two are here. Yeah, great. And we're, we're so glad to have you here and really appreciate that. And, um, and Dr. Ross, it is amazing here. Um, we are so glad to be in here and we're ready for some music and some act, real actors, not us, uh, to be on this stage very soon. And I want to take just a second to say whoever got all of this together, Martin Center staff did this. Great job. I mean, we didn't hear for just one little second, but that is amazing now. So thank you so much for, for doing all, all this work. But yeah. Melissa, I want to tell you those little dots are where Joe Moore puts the band. Where Ron Ramsey is sitting, I think that's where the tubas play. <laughs> there you uh, go. So just a little, little information too. He has a solo coming up. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. We appreciate your report. Okay, any other business? No? I will mention just really quick that the financial statement audit is nearing completion. Um, and we should have that report soon. Um, with that, we will need to go into executive session at this time, um, and we will retire from this place and go to another room. Uh, Dr. Green is gonna tell us where that is. There will be no business uh, or action taken during this executive session, and we should be back in probably 20, to 25 minutes somewhere in that neighborhood to adjourn this meeting. Great.